Thank you, Reverend Clark. The Parliamentary Bureau has proposed that we amend this afternoon's business to begin with a statement from the First Minister, and the party leaders will then follow, uh, and we will conclude by asking members and all colleagues in the Parliament to observe a minute's silence. Uh, may I ask Joe Fitzpatrick, on behalf of the Bureau, to move Motion 5756? Formally moved. Thank you. The question is that we agree. Motion 5756. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. Colleagues, there is a tangible sense of shock and sorrow in Parliament as we come together today and reflect on the events of last night in Manchester. The fact that those deliberately targeted in the attack were innocent children and young people who had come together to enjoy a concert makes the news all the more devastating. But with our sorrow comes compassion and a sense of determination, compassion for the victims and their families, gratitude for the emergency services, and all of those who rushed to the scene to offer help and comfort, and determination to stand with the people of Manchester in the face of such horror. Flags are flying at half-mast at Holyrood today as a mark of respect for the victims. I have this morning written to the Mayor of Greater Manchester, Andy Burnham, on behalf of the Scottish Parliament, sending our thoughts, prayers and support to all those affected by these awful events. And members will also wish to know that a book of condolence has been placed in Queensbury House, which all are invited to sign. May I call on the First Minister? Presiding Officer, it is with great sadness that I rise to speak today. Last night in Manchester, we witnessed a horrific attack on innocent people enjoying a pop concert. My thoughts, those of this Parliament, indeed the thoughts of all of the people of Scotland, are with those who have lost loved ones or sustained injuries in this dreadful atrocity. There can be nothing more cowardly than attacking children and young people enjoying a fun night out. Across Scotland, Scotland today, we stand in solidarity with the people of Manchester, a great city with which so many of us here in Scotland share a close affinity. I have this morning also written to Andy Burnham, the Mayor of Manchester, offering the condolences of the Scottish people and pledging any possible practical support that the Scottish Government or any of our agencies can provide. We also express our gratitude to the emergency services, who continue to work to ensure that people in Manchester and around the country are safe, and whose dedication and bravery, running towards danger as others run away, stands in such sharp contrast to the cowardice of those who carry out such atrocities. Shortly after we received the first substantive reports of this incident in the early hours of this morning, the Scottish Government's resilience room was activated. At 8.30 this morning, I chaired a meeting of the resilience committee, uh, attended by the Deputy First Minister, the Justice Secretary, the Lord Advocate, and senior officers from Police Scotland. In the last half hour, I've received a further update from Police Scotland and will chair a further meeting of the resilience committee later today. The Scottish Government and Police Scotland have been liaising closely with colleagues in the UK Government and with police colleagues in England and Wales throughout the night and during today. I was also updated by the National Security Advisor earlier this morning. At this point, as has been confirmed, 22 people have tragically lost their lives and 59 have been injured, many of them, no doubt, very seriously. Within the last hour, an eight-year-old girl has been named as one of the fatalities. We know there will be much more heartbreak like that to face in the days ahead. Currently, we are aware of four people who have presented at hospital here in Scotland. I understand that two have already been discharged and that a third is likely to be discharged during the course of today. Indeed, it is my information that none of their injuries are life-threatening. Presiding officer, I can uh, confirm also that Police Scotland are in contact with and offering support to the families of Laura McIntyre and Ailey McLeod, the two young girls from Barra who are still unaccounted for having attended the concert last night. It is hard for any of us to imagine the anguish that their families are going through right now. They are in our thoughts and the Scottish Government and Police Scotland will do all we possibly can to ensure that they have all the support that they need. Now, I must stress that we cannot be sure at this stage that there are no other Scots affected, but we continue to liaise closely with Police Scotland to gather information and provide all appropriate support. What we do know is that there may be some people travelling home today 
or in the days ahead who will have been witnesses to events that happened last night. Therefore, as part of Police Scotland's efforts to assist with the ongoing investigation, they will be present at motorway service stations and working with the British Transport Police at major train stations to identify any possible witnesses returning to Scotland from Manchester. What happened last night was a brutal terror attack. And at times like this, it is understandable, uh, unavoidable, that people feel scared and anxious. That is why it is my priority, working with Police Scotland, to ensure that we offer reassurance, but also to ensure that all appropriate protective and precautionary measures are being taken. Now, it is important to emphasise that at this stage, the security threat level remains unchanged at severe. I also want to stress that at this time, there is no intelligence of any increased threat or risk to Scotland. However, as a precautionary measure, Police Scotland have increased security at key locations, such as transport hubs and city centres. There has also been an increase in the number of armed police and armed response vehicles being deployed across Scotland. Uh, police Scotland will keep all of these arrangements under review, as well as the arrangements for security at the various upcoming events that we know about over the next few days. These events range from the small daily events and celebrations that make up the very fabric of our society to large-scale football matches, marathons and VIP events. Police Scotland is looking very closely at every event and the security around them. This will include reviewing every single event due to take place over the next 14 days to ensure that a consistent and appropriate approach is taken across the country. For example, a full review of the Scottish Cup final will be taking place with the SFA to ensure that there is an appropriate deployment of police officers. This is in addition to the work that will be done to ensure public reassurance around the nighttime economy and crowded places more generally. I am being regularly briefed and updated on the police response and I am sure that the public will draw reassurance from the substantial uplift of visible policing on the streets. However, I would stress, as others have done and as it is important to do, that such measures are precautionary. My message to the public is that they should also remain vigilant and report any concerns they have to the police, but they should also go about their everyday business as normal. Siding officer, last night's attack was, as you and others have said, particularly cruel in its targeting of young people enjoying a pop concert, an event that many of them will be, have been looking forward to for months. That they should have been confronted with such horror is utterly heartbreaking. There will also be many other young people across the country uh, who will be seeing on the news and on social media the kind of images that we wish they never had to see. And many young people may feel particularly vulnerable at this time. So this is a time to ensure that we talk to our children at home, at school, and when we hear them talking amongst their friends. We have been in touch with Young Scott this morning, as well as with Education Scotland and local authorities to provide guidance and support to help with those conversations. Young Scott have issued the details of an information line which offers a safe space for any young person in Scotland to make contact and get information. They're also developing an online resource with key information and content to help meet young people's needs, emphasising the importance of respecting other people and their opinions, the emotional impact of this event and how to differentiate between accurate and false information. Presiding officer, we know that terrorists and extremists seek to divide us and destroy our way of life. As human beings, we cannot comprehend the twisted motivations that lead people to carry out such atrocities, particularly when they target children and young people in such a callous way. But our best response now and always is to stand firm together with de determination and solidarity, to make clear to those who seek to undermine our values, target our children and destroy our way of life that they will not succeed, not now and not ever. There are, presiding officer, many people today suffering pain and grief that we can scarcely imagine. And there are others who are still consumed by worry and uncertainty about their loved ones. Let us hold them firmly in our hearts today and in the many difficult days that lie ahead.
Thank you, First Minister. I now call on Ruth Davidson. Thank you. Presenting officer, let me first associate myself and my party with every word of the First Minister's statement. We extend our deepest sympathy and condolences to all the families of those murdered last night. Our prayers, too, are with those who, as we speak, are being treated in hospital, many of them with injuries which are life-threatening. Today, the terrible personal cost of last night's outrage is becoming clear as the names of those who died begin to emerge. We know that many of those affected are young, children, teenagers and young people experiencing the thrill of a night out, a carefree evening ripped apart by terror. Leaving behind parents, family, friends, asking why someone that they don't know and with whom they have had no quarrel decided last night to target their daughter, their grandson, their sister. And we simply cannot imagine their pain today. Nor can we contemplate how someone could deliberately choose to target innocent children and young people. It feels beyond our simple comprehension. There are no words. But as the Prime Minister said earlier today, and as the First Minister has just articulated too, we must try to find them. We must repeat that we will not be beaten by the twisted ideology of terrorism. We must repeat that we will not ourselves descend into hatred or rage. We will repeat and repeat and repeat that we stand tall, we stand together. We respond to every act of terror that strikes our nation by shouting from the rooftops that our values, our freedoms cannot and will not be diminished. Values shared by people of all religions in this country and of none. The values of tolerance, openness and respect for one another. The values of common humanity, of bravery and generosity which saw hundreds of police, paramedics, doctors and nurses work through the night to respond to a situation that they could never have conceived, of householders and taxi drivers opening their homes and offering lifts to help those affected. And let us all in this parliament extend our solidarity with the people of Manchester, who, like the people of Paris, of London, of Brussels, of Nice, have responded with courage and decency in the face of cowardice and evil. Manchester will now be added to the grim roll call of those cities across Europe that have been affected by this terrorism. And like those other cities, it will first cry, then grieve, and then continue with spirit unbroken, showing that terrorism will never win. First Minister, we are informed today that the terrorist threat level across the UK remains at severe, and can I ask what further reassurances you can give people that our exceptional police, defence and security personnel are doing all that they can to keep us safe? Thank you. First Minister. Okay, I thank Ruth Davidson uh, for uh, her comments. As I said earlier on, the uh, security threat level does remain at severe. It is, of course, uh, for the Joint Terrorism Analysis Centre, uh, JTAC, to assess the ongoing situation. Uh, however, Police Scotland uh, have already uh, confirmed to me that following this incident, they have reviewed security across Scotland to ensure that the right level of policing is in place to meet operational requirements and ensure public uh, reassurance. Uh, that security will be to an enhanced level. Uh, as I said in my statement, the police have significantly increased the number of firearms officers who are on uh, duty, uh, and there has been a proportionate increase in armed response vehicles and officers uh, on duty. Uh, as uh, members will understand, it is not appropriate to go into all of the detail of the deployment of police resources, uh, but I am assured that the police are taking all appropriate steps. Uh, and as I also said earlier on, they will uh, review security around all of the events that are upcoming in the days ahead. Uh, I will continue to liaise uh, closely with the Chief Constable and other uh, senior officers in Police Scotland in the days ahead to make sure that all appropriate steps are taken to keep the population of our country as safe as possible. Thank you. I call on Kezia Dugdale. They would have been dressed in pink in sparkles, bunny ears perched in their heads and grins on their faces. The very picture of innocence. The children who went to see American pop star and Disney TV actress Ariana Grande at the Manchester Arena last night would have been unable to contain their excitement. The atmosphere would have been electric. Every one of us has been there, been one of them, enthralled by the sound and vision of a pop star at their peak, desperate to see in the flesh the person whose image we've plastered on our bedroom walls. Being at a gig is a moment of sheer joy, but last night that joy was destroyed in a despicable act of cowardice. All that excitement, that innocent elation, turned to fear, to shock and to horror. 
Just hours after they arrived, children left that concert crying, screaming, utterly bewildered by what had just happened. Their ears ringing, not with the echo of pop music, but with the blast of a bomb. Today, those children will know that 22 of those who had shared the joy of that concert alongside them are dead, and that 59 people are in hospital with terrible injuries, and that too many parents are still desperately searching for the children who haven't come home. Those children too will know the phrase suicide bomber and the appalling reality of what that means. A story which they might have watched on Newsround, couched in age-appropriate language to soften the roughest of edges, has brutally intruded into their young lives. For us as adults, hearing the news of terrorist atrocities, be they bombs or bullets or cars mowing people down in the street, is all too sadly now commonplace. We tend to cover our children's ears and eyes to protect them from the knowledge. And we hold them closer, all too aware of the fragility of their precious lives. But for those children and young people who witnessed last night's abominable act, there is no softening the blow, no making it better, no suggesting that these things don't happen here or to us or to people we know. They are now fully aware that when someone determines to kill others, when someone purposely straps a bomb to their body with a twisted plan to detonate it amongst innocent children, that there is nothing any one of us can do to prevent the horrific, inevitable outcome. And we cannot explain it to them. How can you tell an eight-year-old that there is a justifiable reason that children died last night? How can you explain the actions, the thought process, of someone who can look at a concert full of young people and see nothing but a target? But what we can do is respond well. We can teach our children that the only way to counter such barbarity is not with hate and with fear, but with compassion, tolerance, kindness and love. Like the people of Manchester did last night. Flocking to help, taking people home, offering places to stay and searching for children who had become separated from their parents. Like those who work in our emergency services did, as they always do, running, unflinching, towards horror rather than away from it, to offer comfort and care and rescue. No doubt over the coming days we will discover the name of the coward who chose to kill excited children at a concert, and there will be attempts to understand why they did it. For those who are grieving, there will be no worthy answers. For those left traumatised, there will be no comprehension. Does the First Minister agree that what there will be, though, is a toughening of our resolve in the face of terror, a renewal of our belief in the enduring British values of tolerance and respect, and a determination to make sure that such horrific acts will never undermine our freedom nor our democracy. Thank you. First Minister. Well, again, uh, can I thank Kezia Dugdale for uh, her comments? I think she has uh, described very powerfully and in a a very poignant way, the excitement that so many children and young people would have felt last night setting out uh, to a concert that for many of them would have been their first experience of such an event. And I don't think there'll be a single one of us uh, when we have been listening to the news of uh, these events today who will not have pictured a, a child or young person in our own lives. For me, it's my 10-year-old my niece herself, a, a massive fan of Ariana Grande somebody who could have been at a concert like that last night. And it brings it home uh, so personally uh, to all of us. Uh, and the truth is, there is no way we can explain to young people how, uh, why uh, those uh, people died last night, because there is no justifiable reason for it. But we can help those young people to process and come to terms uh, with what happened. And that's why, as well as the duties that uh, the government has to work with the police to keep our population as safe as possible, as well as the duties we all have to support and give gratitude to our public services. We all have a responsibility in the days ahead to help not just those young people that were at that concert in Manchester last night, but those other young people who will have watched these scenes on their televisions today to understand, to process and to come to terms. And that's why the work that I've described that Young Scott is leading uh, is so important. Uh, but above all else, uh, I do agree with Kezia Dugdale, the most important response we can give to terror uh, and to terrorists is to stand firm in defence of the values we hold dear. It's those values they seek to destroy and it's those values we must defend and protect with everything we've got. I call on Patrick Harvey.
Thank you, Presiding Officer. On behalf of the Scottish Green Party, may I express our deepest sympathies for those who have been affected by this vicious attack. To those grieving the loss of loved ones, those desperately seeking news, and those recovering, some of whom may be living with their injuries as well as with the impact of this horrific experience for the rest of their lives. I'd like to express our gratitude to those who responded to the emergency services, the staff at the venue, concert goers and passers-by, and to all of those who acted out of common humanity in opening their doors or offering help of any kind to those who needed it in the aftermath. And in recognition of the grotesque motivations behind such an act, uh, the intention to divide our society and to sow further hatred, I agree with the First Minister that our response must be grounded from the first moment in a determination to stand together and to strengthen the bonds between us. The First Minister has said that she is being regularly briefed on the security aspects of the situation, and I'm sure that the Scottish Government will also want to keep Parliament informed. As we move forward in that, we must always keep in mind the need to preserve our commitment to being a free and open society, where security measures are used where needed, but are not allowed to become a way of life. I'd also like to ask the First Minister about the Scottish Government's preparedness for any possible reaction expressed in the form of hate crime. Because she's right that our best response is to stand firm in solidarity. That means ensuring, certainly, that terrorism never achieves its goal, but also that those who react to it out of hatred prejudice or a demand for retribution also never achieve their goals. Can I ask what actions the Scottish Government is taking by way of communication between the Scottish Emergency Services and those in the northwest of England? Are there opportunities for us to share resources, skills, experience uh, and to support one another? Finally, Presiding Officer, a, a brief reflection on Manchester. I lived there for around five years as a student and shortly after. Not long after I left Manchester, the city experienced a terrorist bombing in the city centre. Manchester came together. They stood together, they supported one another, they became strong and they showed their resilience. I have no doubt at all that Manchester will do the same again. First Minister. Can I thank Patrick Carvey for his contribution? Uh, two points I think are, are worth making in response. Firstly, to reassure Patrick Harvey and the Chamber that uh, our emergency services, the Scottish Government and all of our agencies stand ready to provide whatever uh, support and assistance that we are able to uh, today and in the days ahead. Uh, our police service, uh, our National Health Service uh, have already uh, made clear that uh, they stand ready and able to provide uh, assistance and uh, we will make sure that there is an awareness and understanding of what assistance as this situation uh, further uh, develops that we are able uh, to provide as I said earlier on Police Scotland uh, as will always be the case in these situations uh, is doing what it can to assist with the ongoing investigation as well. Uh, second point uh, very briefly to touch on is the one of community cohesion and the need to be vigilant against hate crimes. Uh, of course we mustn't speculate at this stage about the identity or the background of the individual who carried out this atrocity, that information will undoubtedly uh, become known uh, over the course of the next few days. But what we must uh, be clear about, even now at this stage, that this individual uh, was not acting on behalf of any uh, section of our community or any faith uh, in our society. This was an individual uh, committing criminal uh, and terrorist atrocities. Uh, and part of the purpose of those atrocities is to seek to divide us and to turn us against each other. And we must be absolutely determined that that will not be allowed to happen. So one of the issues discussed at a resilience uh, meeting this morning uh, was the need to guard against hate crimes and to do everything we can uh, to protect the cohesion within our communities. And I can assure the Chamber that that will be one of the priorities that remains at the forefront of our minds uh, in the next few days. Colin Willie Rennie. I thank the First Minister for coming to the Chamber today to make this statement. I want to express my absolute condolences to the people, to the children affected, their families and the support services helping them as best they can. 
This morning was a moment that when you woke up to the news on the radio, you tried to turn it off, as if by not hearing it, you could make it not true. We are all horrified that such an attack can take place on young people who are full of joy and fellowship. When we confront such heartbreaking news, we have to be clear in our answer to the question, what did you do? Ordinary people in Manchester throwing open their homes to give shelter and queues to donate blood. Let it be the case that we said we will live for hope, joy and fellowship. We will work to end division. We will stand with in all of those communities who want peace. We will use intelligence and devoted duty to seek out and stop those individuals who choose to kill fellow humans and sow fear. They will not succeed. Our better human values will prevail. It is hard today, here and in Manchester, to say that, but our better human values will prevail. Will the First Minister take forward those sentiments? First Minister. Well, can I thank Willie Rennie for that? Uh, I thoroughly endorse those sentiments and can assure the Chamber that in everything we do in response to this, we will seek to take forward uh, those sentiments and make sure they lie at the heart uh, of not just our response to this or any atrocity, but to how we uh, live uh, our lives. And I think it is an important point that out of the, the darkness and the sadness and the horror of an event last night, very quickly starts to shine hundreds upon hundreds of acts of simple human kindness. And probably more than anything else today, that should give all of us strength and confidence and belief that the terrorists will not succeed because they are up against something that is much stronger than any of them. Uh, that is humanity, uh, the kindness of humanity and the values that hold all of us together.